fact that one of the things that I think we're hearing throughout this conference, and certainly one of my beliefs, is, this, is the school day for students starts when they get in the school bus, and, it's, and it ends when they get home. It's not the case that it starts at the school gate, it starts in the school, in the school bus, which is why what we're talking about here is engaging in education. I wanted to start with a little story, a little journey um, about why I'm here. I am really pleased to be here, and I'm so pleased that we've got, managed to get so many people from around the region. Um, to begin with, how I want to share is how I became involved in the school transportation industry. The lessons I learned in those early days and why I remain so passionate about the work we do today. In the year 1999, I was a young parent living in North London, and like parents all over the world, I was having to juggle family life <laughs> and work life. Every day I climb into my car, rushing the kids out the door so we can leave that bit earlier to avoid peak traffic time to get them to school so basically I could get to work. The ritual carried on for several years until one day I thought to myself, what about a school bus? I really need a school bus. So I did my research and I found a small little private school bus company that was called the School Run Company. I operated in my area. I didn't do a lot of investigation because the name was School Run Company and thinking they must know what they're doing. So I registered my son immediately onto the bus. He was seven years old at the time. And surely, he was going to be safe. After several months of using the service, if it was even that long, I, be I began to be a little concerned, not only about how the company was being managed, but what measures were in place to ensure the buses were safe. The communication was non-existent. And, uh, and often, I did not know where the bus was. I know it's now 20 years later, so we have a bit more technology. But I didn't know where the bus was. And I didn't know where my child was. So basically, the drivers gave me confidence because they were quite friendly. And they seemed to have a really good rapport with the children. But there was definitely a lack of professionality. However, while I had my concerns for that reason, I needed the bus. This is why they outweighed my concerns, because I needed the requirement. One day, that all changed. My son came home and told me he had a really funny story to tell me about the school bus. I said, OK, what's that? He went out to say, well, when we were riding to school today, Mom, the door kept opening on the bus, and it was really funny because the driver had to get out and run back and get out and run back, and he thought it was quite amusing as they were going down the road to have the school bus door opening. Well, needless to say, I did not think it was particularly amusing, so I immediately said, where were you sitting and did you have your seatbelt on? I don't think he understood the question of why I was concerned. So what I did at that point was I called the bus company. Did I get any response? Unfortunately, at the time, not. So what I did, which is even probably a bit more crazy, is I bought the bus company. And the reason I did that was because I said, this is too much of a required service that we shouldn't be doing something to get our children into a system that is safe and is transparent and reputable, and then we can actually get to work and they can get to school safely. That was over 20 years ago. And the reason I wanted to tell this story is that the challenges I faced then are the same challenges we face now, not just here in Southeast Asia, but all over the world. The journey continues to be one of educating all stakeholders, and I can't say that word enough, education. Not just on the role they play, but the importance of fully integrating school transportation into a seamless part of the school day. This requires the buy-in from senior leadership in schools and partnerships between all stakeholders. I am pleased that Dorothy spoke about quality partnerships, and Kun Thanachart spoke about school bus committees. That is, that's about partnership and working together. It's between parents, schools, and students, and operators as this encourages best practice and better understanding on how to work proactively versus pointing fingers when something goes wrong. Now I'd like to define what I meant and who I mean by stakeholders, if you don't already know. Um, and how are the challenges to developing the partnership? I've broken the partnership down into two segments, These in, or into segments which includes all the stakeholders, the roles they play, and then ultimately how they all fit together like a puzzle to deliver a safe, efficient, and value for money service for our children. While keeping in mind, value for money does not mean the same thing as lowest cost. So what are the issues or challenges I identified? Well, so let's, let's start with the fact the stakeholders I, I put into two different categories, the industry and the customer. The industry stakeholders are the service providers, the operators, the bus crew, and the regulators. The operator has the professional responsibility to employ the qualified bus crew, to oversee vehicle safety and maintenance, to ensure adherence by drivers and to all road traffic and vehicle regulations. They also have to plan and review the routes to so make sure the routes are risk assessed and safe, and they are responsible for timely communication with schools and parents as required. 
The role of the driver and the bus attendant is one of the most important. And I would like to remind you what Eric Vandenberg said today at the start of this conference and what has been said by other speakers. They're often the unsung heroes and not always properly engaged and appreciated by schools, parents, and even the children, sadly. However, they have one of the most important roles to oversee the safe transport of each student from home to school and back. They are off there, there to assist students and often develop positive relationships with the students and school staff as they spend upwards of one and a half hours a day or 45 minutes each journey with students. That's sometimes more than most parents see their children on a daily basis. Some drivers in attendance are truly passionate about their role. Uh, however, as formal bus crew qualifications can be minimum, and if a lack of engagement with the school also exists, then their jobs can be most challenging. This is exacerbated uh, in the international schools sector due to the wider range of different cultures at any time within the school. One of the Cognita schools here in Singapore, the Stanford American International, which we are at the Early Learning Village, has over 76 different countries represented in the school population, uh, which, which is a real challenge when you see some of these children arrive without speaking any English. The language and culture differences can create problems and misunderstandings, which through training and working together can help to overcome and prevent many of these problems. The role of the regulator is to support the industry by setting the standards and supporting stakeholders through education and enforcement and to enable good quality operators to, uh, to operate on a level playing field. I think Kun Thanachart mentioned that today. Uh, we had issues with that in the United Kingdom going back, and I, I'm not sure how much that's been solved. But we had what we used to call cowboys, and it made it very difficult for operators like myself who really wanted to offer a safe uh, uh, alternative to the family car because I was under pressure to compete with people who may not even be maintaining their vehicles properly. The customers are the consumers of the service and includes the parents, the schools, and the students. The parents and schools, like I did, they want a safe, reliable service with good lines of communication. And they want a child-friendly atmosphere in their bus, one which mirrors the atmosphere in the school. The students want to feel safe. They want to see their friends. Do they want to arrive on school in time? And they don't want to worry about being bullied or about, indeed, about being injured. So what is required to build a partnership between all stakers, one, stakeholders? Sorry, one which ultimately results in the development of a professional school transport service. I'm afraid I'm going to sound repetitive. It's about education of all stakeholders, not just on their roles and what to bring to the partnership, but how they can work together to provide a truly integrated school transport service for students. It's crucial that the schools work closely and in partnership with the operator. In most cases, parents do not reach out to operators to privately contract their services. The schools identify the operator who will service the requirements of their students. Therefore, it is logical for parents to assume to hold the schools responsible for any issues they encounter on the service. It is also logical for parents to assume that the service will be run to the same level of safety as they expect within the environments of the school building, and equally that their ethos and safeguarding principles will extend into the school bus. So how do we get there? What do we want, what, what do we want this to be? We want it to be about safe buses, regularly maintained, inspected with suitable child safety restraints, which meets the needs of each student, well-planned routes, which are risk assessed and meet the requirements of the customers, robust training programs, which engage bus crew, students, schools, and operators to understand their roles together, proactive supervision, and education initiatives to continuously build on relationships among stakeholders. And what is required? Well, Robust service level agreements similar to quality partnerships as you see in the public service industry between the operator and the school versus the government and the operators. But that is really important to put down in writing what you actually want from each other and how you're going to deliver that. And some of that has to be measurable. Schools should have their own transport operating procedures which include who and how often they will be training with the education, with the support of the operator, and who and how they will be educating all the stakeholders. The S school's SOPs, and there should be some, should also dictate the level of required communication so parents are kept informed on how the students will be safely picked up, how they'll be dropped off to and from school, and what are the policies in case there's an incident, in case there's an issue on the road. There should be clear lines of responsibility and accountability to ensure robust implementation and oversights of these standards, like reviews, performance evaluations, audits. The bus culture should mirror the school culture. I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. The school's ethos and alignment with safety and safeguarding practices is crucial. Once we have this partnership in place through education, 
and working together to solve problems and not point fingers, then we can truly start to move forward. This week in the United States, as it happens, is National School Bus Safety Week. This is a week where schools work together with operators and, 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 the, and the local county councils, if there's county councils or townships, and they recognize the importance of this service through student-led activities and initiatives, such as poster competitions, recognizing drivers, recognizing good student behavior. Uh, you have one here. These are all done by, except for the two top, these are done by students and they have competitions regularly. This is involving student council, and it's involving children to be responsible for their own behavior and understand why. To conclude, <laughs> I'd like to think if you take anything away today, you'll consider how best to work together through partnerships and education programs for all stakeholders. I know I'm speaking to an audience of the converted. Uh, you may be working with people who aren't so converted. Um, I'm hoping we're giving you some impetus, some information to bring it back to where you, whether it's a school, whether it's an operation, uh, whether it's the government, to actually try to understand how it is best to work together. There, there can be some community initiatives we can work together with. For example, involving the wider community, I think one of the speakers touched on that today, providing jointly child car check events. I know that uh, Vera has mentioned uh, how, how uh, excuse me, it was our esteemed CEO who had mentioned about how he didn't know how to put the car seat in for his grandson this morning. 80% of all car seats are installed properly, improperly. That's a large amount, of, that's a large number. You can provide this kind of car seat check within your local school, with your wider community who doesn't necessarily take buses, but it's also about um, sending that message about safety when it, in any type of transport. And students can encourage parents to learn about how best to keep them safe. Thank you.